Welcome to our special guest interview here on the Accounting Influencers Podcast. And I'm thrilled to have with me today, Mr. Glenn Morgan. Glenn, good day to you. Hello. How are you doing? Well, fantastic. Glenn, super to have you with us. For people that haven't come across you, tell us briefly what you do. Right. I run two companies. Um, one is called Credit, which is uh, works quite heavily in the insolvency and invoice finance industries, recovering uh, book debts for distressed businesses, etc. Um, and the other one is it's settled, as you can see behind me. I got rid of the um, got rid of the bits of my office, uh, and that is an automated credit control and cash flow management platform designed for SMEs, but also you know we get to them via uh, accountants, banks, invoice finance providers, funders, etc. Okay, um, so you can speak into the world of accountants. There's a lot going on at the moment. What kind of shape do you feel the accounting profession is in right now, from your perspective? Um, yeah, I think I think good shape. I think there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, pressure because as the businesses are starting to feel the pressure, they look to their trusted advisors, and um, yeah, I'm sure that accountants are being asked to do lots of things that they haven't um, in the past. You know, going way beyond um, you know sort of compliance and, and the statutory stuff, and actually being asked to be advisors and as we all know January usually ends up being a time where any business that's struggling in any way shape or form makes the call to their accountant after worrying about it uh, after Christmas so uh, I'm sure they're all really busy just to throw into the mix where they're all trying to meet tax deadlines as well. Absolutely right that's a good shout and uh, speaking from the business side of things Glenn you deal a lot with these what challenges do you feel the business fraternity are having right now uh, are likely to face this year? Yeah, no, I think I think um, 2022 is going to be very challenging for businesses. I think they've had two years of some struggling, some not, some thriving. But uh, all the while, the ones that were struggling were able to get some government money in um, and kick the can down the road, so to speak. So didn't have to worry too much about it. That money is drying up now, um, certainly in the UK and um the support is not there anymore so yeah i think they're you know i think they're in for um for a, for a challenge in time i think there's going to be an upsurge in insolvencies and um you know a lot of turnaround restructuring and and everything like that um will be prevalent all, all predictions lead to there being too much pressure on businesses at the moment and uh, something's got to give and you bring up an interesting point in terms of cash flow because a lot of loans that have been deferred will now be comparable uh, and tax bills that have been put off, a lot of furloughing and uh, grants taken out, that all gets kicked down the road, but it needs paying at some point. So what role do the accountants have in supporting businesses through these challenging times? Yeah, I think like I sort of referred to earlier, I think that um, additional support that they can give, you know, cash flow forecast, cash flow management, um, being aware of sort of tools and things that are out there that are going to be able to help businesses and they know you know they they're switched on to which ones are going to be useful for them and them acting far more as advisors to uh, to their clients and they probably have had to do in the past i think that's going to be really key hand holding to a certain extent and with the hand holding accountants have long since wanted to be that trusted advisor whether they've stepped up into that role is perhaps a, a bone of contention do you feel accountants are equipped to handle the pressures that their business clients are under? Um, I think to a certain extent. I mean, obviously, if it gets too bad, then they start looking at restructuring insolvency <laughs> practitioners and all that kind of thing. But as, right. as far as a, uh, you know, a trading business that just needs some help, advice and support, I think if the accountants have kept up to date with you know, all the developments that have taken place, the tools that are available, um, and they've evolved their offering, then, yeah, I think they are best placed. I think people still very much see their accountants as, as you know, their most trusted advisor. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's going to go away. I think anyone you trust to deal with your financials, then you, you tend to trust them, you know, consistently. And people don't usually change accountants unless they've got a really good reason for it, and that's that, that trust has been lost. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, it's usually a long-term relationship in the way that uh, that quite a lot of other business relationships aren't so yeah i think i think not only are they best equipped uh to deal with it going forward but i think you know i think that's what businesses would want as their first port call they'll only they'll only look elsewhere if um if their accountants aren't helping them 
And credit management, that's very much been your world for a long time now. Just give us some insight into what's happening in that world for the accountants and the business owners listening, Glenn. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, big businesses have always had access to, and I know this because I used to go in at sort of director level to some of them, uh, mm -hmm. big businesses have always had access and resource to, you know, getting a really decent um, credit policy, credit check in their customers and everything like that. In the SME space, you know, specifically, obviously, my knowledge is, is of the UK. Um, they don't have access to that. They quite often only worry about it a couple of years after they've set up. Um, and again, they might go to their accountant and ask for it. And it's, you know, it's a very different skill set. There's not a huge amount of accountants that are comfortable offering, you know, credit control and credit management as part of their part of their offering. Um, so yeah, I think they need to look for, you know, what else is um, what else is out there and available to, to supplement their services. But the world of credit management has got more difficult over the last couple of years. You know, the UK has got sort of 60, 70 billion overdue at any time owed to SMEs, wow. and it could end up with some of them failing. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really key now that as business does, hopefully, start to return to normal that, um, that you know, they're, they're looking at the ways that they can improve that dramatically. And there's no reason to suggest that what's happening in the UK isn't happening all over the world in terms of debt and credit and money's been owed. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, obviously we're very close to knowing the, the sort of stimulus that the British government put in, but there were packages agreed by, by most um, developed governments around the world mm. in order to help. You know, I don't even want to think about how much is owed and how much government <laughs> debt has been built up during this time. But yeah, like you said, something's got to give and I think it will be survival of the fittest for the businesses that keep their cash flow management under control and, and for that they're going to need their accountants to make sure that the uh, the advice is appropriate for their circumstances. Mm. Do you discern any appreciable difference Glenn in what separates the good accountants from the great because some have fallen short in these challenging times maybe not served the clients as well as they could have done being as proactive as they should have that intelligence that commercial expertise to deal with the complexity of things going on have you seen a big difference um yeah we've seen we've seen a number of accountants sort of adding to their portfolio of services should we okay. say not, not not necessarily doing it all themselves but what having are they a... adding what kind of things do you see them adding so there is there is credit management interest right. um you know we're definitely seeing that but um yeah i think you know we 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 discussed this before but sort of 80 percent of accountants normally do the statutory the compliance you know the tax returns the keeping on top of things um i think more and more are looking at uh, at the other services so the consultant side of things the you know the virtual um fd or actual you know fd of that business you know if you're a five million turnover business you can't afford a finance director so you've got an accountant though so why wouldn't you ask them to you know to step in and act on that side of things um some offer corporate finance you know there's 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 a lot of things that they're expanding into and why not they've won the client um they've got their trust it's much easier to upsell to the existing clients than it is to go out and win new ones because where are they coming from yes that makes very good sense have you noticed how accounting firms have changed over recent years perhaps in the way they're growing or winning work or standing out because it is competitive out there we know new businesses are starting all the time we know there's a lot of insolvency work about as you've indicated so this competition for this business have they changed much they're not generally known for being agile and adaptive are they no i mean i guess it depends if their model has worked for them, if 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 they just want to do the, um, you know, like we said, the statutory and compliance stuff, and they've got a, a decent customer base and they haven't got any capacity and they've got no, uh, you know, interest in recruiting more or anything like that, mm. um, and they tick over well enough, then, you know, good luck to them. But, I, yeah, we are seeing more and more. I think there are a lot that are, that are adding other things because they can see what's coming and and i think the biggest thing is adopting automation adopting digital solutions and trying to adopt things that are going to make their lives a lot easier and that of their clients it's a very good point is, is there any aspect of the accounting tech do you feel hasn't evolved as quickly as it should have done that's a really good question um 
Yeah, I think they the, the, the problem accountants probably face every day is that there are so many platforms, apps and things like that launching all the time. FinTech yeah. is a massive growth industry. It's as overwhelmed, a SaaS. isn't it? Yes, yeah. SaaS software, yes. So any accountant probably gets, you know, several requests every week. Look at this. This is the next best thing. Look at the next best thing. And and I think part of their uh, part of their skill set at the moment needs to be looking at them and and finding out very quickly whether they're number one if they've got a USP, number two if they're you know better than what's on the market at the moment, and and really being able to cut through them all because otherwise. Yeah, they just get bombarded. There's too many. They haven't got enough time to be looking at all of them and deciding which ones are good and which ones aren't. So, you know, I would advise them to look for existing client testimonials, you know, for these people who've used it and, you know, can see that side of things and actually other accountants that have used it. I know sometimes it's a new product to market and there may not have been anybody who's used it. So they might need to have a demo or anything like that. But, you know, if they've got any kind of traction, so far then uh, then that's fairly useful for them to you know to find out what others think of it you pick up on a good point there the vendors have loud voices these days and often big budgets and they're very persuasive with accounting firms in pushing them to take on certain softwares and methodologies and managing partners and even ctos chief technical officers they're not always in the best place to make good strategic decisions on technology uh, any advice there yeah i think it's, it's about adding something new to what you've got. So, yeah, I mean, without without mentioning names, we've got a <laughs> we've got a, a particular uh, software that claims to do what we do, but doesn't. And in reality, it doesn't actually do anything more than your zeros or your QuickBooks or your Sage or whatever does mm. does for you anyway. But thousands of accountants in the UK have been on, put on their sort of training um, signed up to be a you know a distributor of this thing and then realized that you know there's been very little uptake because the actual end user has realized there's no difference I've got this already so why would I why would I go for it but the the sales team of that particular organization has obviously done a fantastic job on these accountants <laughs> convincing them that it's something that they need whilst promising them a you know a, a, a commission so I think it's yeah they've got to cross-examine uh, in a certain way to to work out if that really is going to be something that's uh, that's useful for you because you know there are some fantastic um, platforms out there and I can you know name several but uh, obviously we're not going to start advertising various ones here um, and um, they all know exactly how to speak to accountants they've done their research and everything so yeah I think I think that's key is just being being prepared to cross examine them and find out why they're different and why you as an accountant should actually bother using them at all. Mm, well, let's talk about one you do have permission to speak on, and that's it settled. Uh, <laughs> what's the proposition there for accountants, Glenn? Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so we're effectively, as I said, automated credit management and cash flow uh, management platform. Uh, it integrates to all of the major accounting software providers, pulls across the invoices, and then the uh, accountant or the user can pretty much forget about it. It's chased regularly through an automated process with follow ups got query management functionality you can pause the process when there's a payment promise etc so our proposition as opposed to anything else that's on the market is they claim to have the automation but in reality the user has all the heavy work still to do they have to choose what to do and when to do it ours takes that away for you so it's using my 28 years credit management experience to codify a process that i know you know has worked to collect in billions over the last sort of 10 15 years and anything that helps accountants save some time and doing the, the mundane automated stuff has got to work, hasn't it? It has. And we've also helped a few accountancy firms recently develop credit control as an offering to their clients. So right. they, up, they up their monthly retainer to the client. They offer to do credit control for them. And then they don't because we do. Um, so they spend about 10, 15 minutes a day on it, just logging in just to make sure everything's ticking over. But, um, you know, they're there upsell opportunities have been fairly significant um, on that and you know once again they're not losing the trust of the client they're not losing the client in any way they're not sending them off to somewhere else to to deal with anything so you know it keeps that relationship and, and actually enhances it and this is going beyond what a general ledger company would do with the the bookkeeping and cash flow and seeing where a business is at any point in time and what it's owed and, and what it has in the bank 
Um, yeah, I mean, obviously it goes beyond that because you can look at um, you can look at the overdue position. You can see the types of queries that you get in it. it. Tells you how to resolve all the various queries, and it uses the mindset and the skill set of a credit department. So any anyone receiving the the chasing from there will just think that either the company themselves or the accountant acting on their behalf has dedicated qualified credit people dealing with it, which uh, which obviously is not the case if you've got a bookkeeper or anything, despite the fact that uh, lots of bookkeepers use it because then they can bridge that gap. And once again, it looks like they, uh, they know what they're doing. Mm. And if an accountant listening is thinking, yeah, credit management, credit control is something I would like to add. It seems like a good fit for what we're doing. What is good credit control look like and what might be some first steps for them to take? Yeah, so good credit control, very simple, is consistency. Consistency regarding the treatment of any customer. So you treat the good and the bad, whatever you perceive them as being in exactly the same way, with exactly the same process at exactly the same time. Right from uh, credit checking, you know, before dealing with them in the first place, being prepared to set, you know, a sensible credit limit for them and sticking to it all the way through to, um, you know, getting the invoicing correct, making sure it's got all of the various things that it needs on it to make it legally uh, compliant, resolving queries quickly, you know, don't give customers the excuse uh, not to pay because they'll take it and they'll nurture it and they'll wait. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, a defined consistent process with set steps at set times that are followed every single time and each one escalating from the previous one. There's no point, you know, one of the accounting software providers, for instance, this, um, offers a thing where you can send a reminder and it's exactly the same reminder each time. And it's just one line in an email and, you know, it's just terrible. And that's one of the biggest accounting software providers in the world. Um, has that as a tool on there that they've sort of bolted on and yeah it just doesn't make any sense but yeah treating all customers the same very important being prepared to escalate and realizing if you do treat them all the same you'll actually keep the relationship with them despite the fact you're chasing you for money which people seem scared of mm, that's very diplomatic of you not to mention that particular company Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> our commercial partners and sponsors might be pleased if it is them we don't know but uh in terms of what's coming up for the accounting profession over the next few years get your crystal ball out i know it's dangerous to predict we won't put money on it but what do you feel is coming up over the next few years yeah as i said i think there's there's the challenge um i think the way that accountants service their clients the way they innovate um will be very important but yeah i think as far as um you know, the sort of crystal ball for the um, economy in general. I think, it, yeah, I think it's going to be a tough, tough few years, um, but with the right support that they and the right technology and and the right partners and everything, then, yeah, I think the accountancy profession is uh, is going to do perfectly well out of it. Are you seeing an increase in insolvency where you're looking businesses going out of business? Uh, there is. Um, there definitely was. It's just been released the sort of Q4 figures in the UK for, for last year and there was an upsurge, but it's still still the ones that you would expect. So construction and retail, hospitality being very, uh, very heavily impacted. Um, I think there'll be a much broader range, broader range happening this year as uh, well, like we said, the um, support money's run out and now it needs to be repaid. So uh, that's a tricky time, not mentioning everything else that's going on. Sure, we could put a lot of that down to COVID. Is any of that down to poor credit control and management? Yeah, well, the, the late payment issue has, has increased. Uh, it was about 48, 50 billion pre-COVID. Um, it's now monitored at being 61, 62, but that's, once again, that's six months out of date. So it wouldn't surprise me if it was up near the 70 mark now. So a lot of it is 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 late payment. Um, government measures preventing action being taken to chase late payment. Businesses became aware of that. There was landlord forbearance. They weren't allowed to take action if they weren't paid for the properties that the tenants were in. You know, there's been a lot of things that prevented people from um, from collecting from you know anyone and businesses have taken advantage of that. Sometimes whether they needed to or not, they've just done it because they could. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you in a moment, Glenn, just to finish off with some words of advice for the accounting practitioners listening to serve their business clients better. And you can answer that however you like. But 
for now, you're a very passionate guy. You've been doing this a long time, but you continue to be invigorated by the challenges ahead. What excites you most for this year coming up? Yeah, I mean, with everything that's happened in the last two years and, and with us launching just before that, obviously our traction didn't hit where it should be. But we know all of these things have kicked the can down the road. So there is going to be a lot of a lot of issues, late payment, you know, and all the other things we spoke about. So the thing that excites me is being able to help as many businesses as possible um, and help them maintain a positive cash flow and, uh, and, and hopefully beyond the next couple of years still be around and thriving and growing. And you know, nothing gives me greater pleasure than having a chat with a director after we've helped them for a period of time of a business who, uh, you know, is really struggling and they've got nothing but positive things to say. And, uh, you know, that that makes you go to bed at night with a smile on your face. So mm. that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. And do you tend to deal directly with the businesses or do you work through accountants to get to those businesses? Uh, well, both. Yeah, we have a we have a direct acquisition strategy, but we, if I'm honest, we prefer going via accountants because um, if if you've got the trust of the accountant um, that's dealing with them, they're then their trusted advisors of that business. Um, so you've already got you know one one step towards being able to help them. Um, I think accountants are also very good at identifying within their portfolio the ones that are likely to um, you know to benefit most from it. So we like going down that route. Uh, to a lesser extent, banks, funders, et cetera, you know, they're not necessarily as trusted. <laughs> you don't trust your bank maybe as much as you trust your accountant. Mm. Um, but yeah, we, we, we like those routes to go in because I think it, it gives us a sort of softer landing to get in front of them. And what questions, a couple of questions, could an accountant ask of their client that would bring up a need for what you do or highlight a red flag, if you like, which would make them think, let's give Glenn Morgan a call? Yeah, so the, the things we normally say is a growing uh, or large 90-day debt column, so something that's been outstanding for quite some time, um, and certainly if they're doing their cash flow forecasting and have a link to their accounting software and anything like that, then they'll, they'll, they'll have an understanding for that. Um, any that have had you know, a bad debt that they've had to write off, that they're worried about the impact of that on their business, just any that are concerned about cash flow, mm. any... Sorry, I was just going to say as well, any any that have maybe even applied for a loan and been rejected, um, because quite often the amount that they've applied for is actually sat on their debtor book and they can get that sorted out and then they don't need the loan anyway. And you're in an unusual situation, Glenn, in that you run two companies. Tell us quickly about credit. Yeah, so credit we uh, established in 2009. Uh, we're one of probably four or five uh, of the sort of bigger um, collection agents in the UK that deals with uh, turnaround, distress, restructuring uh, in the invoice finance and insolvency sectors. So we do collect out when it's too late, but we also very much enjoy and very much get involved in where somebody refers us into a business. And like I said, they've got a big 90 day column. Uh, they've got issues. They've not been you know, collecting it properly. It's either a resource issue or, um, you know, various sort of reasons why it's not gone um not gone well so we go in there support them get it all back on track and hopefully send them back into uh into the sort of mainstream to continue mm. and we know that the uk is your heartland do you deal internationally with businesses and accountants um yeah so we 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 collect from every country i think we've you know nearly every country in the world we've collected from um plans in the future certainly with it settled to go international but at this stage with with credit the uh, insolvency legislation and the, the way that we work has has been confined to the uk um could have maybe expanded until a couple of years ago when all of a sudden that didn't seem as uh, as attractive sure and uh, if people want to have a conversation with you glenn from wherever they are what's a good way for them to reach you However they like, yep. Yeah. So the web, the website, email address, glenn at itsettled.co.uk or glenn at credit, depending on your preference, .co.uk. Uh, yeah, or my mobile number. So um, I assume that'll be linked to that or it will. I, won't, I won't shout it out now. Sure, that's fine. <laughs> and just in closing, Glenn, what words of advice or encouragement would you give to the accounting practitioners listening to help them serve their clients better in the coming year? Yeah, stay close to them. Um, I think as as much as possible, you know, don't don't wait for it to be, um, you know, annual return time if you're only doing that side of things for them. But yes, yeah, stay, stay, stay close to them. I think that uh, the better relationship they've got, the more that their clients feel they can approach them for anything, 
um, then they're really, you know, proving their worth and ensuring their loyalty for years to come. Great words. Glenn Morgan of Credit and It's Settled. That's been terrific. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Rob. You've been watching or listening to the Accounting Influencers podcast featuring hosts Rob Brown and Martin Bissett with key interviews, what's working in the accounting profession and news from the accounting and fintech world that helps you do your jobs better. We go out to 144 countries, over 20,000 unique listeners with 100,000 downloads and it is accredited for continued professional education and development. Thank you for tuning in.